Open your Bible today to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11 and starting in verse 15. And they came to Jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple. And he began to cast out those who sold and bought. Are you listening, TV preachers? Those who sell products? Those who beg and plead for money over TV? Buying and selling in the temple? He began to cast out those who sold and bought in the temple. And he overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them who sold doves. And he would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Now, the context. Moments earlier, <laughs> he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, and the people were waving palm branches at him, and they were singing, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, treating him as a rock star. And then he comes in, and he goes into a rant and a rage, and he overthrows the table. You see, a lot of y'all think Jesus was a little limp-wristed twink, about 130 pounds. No, 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 no. He was a dude, man. He was a carpenter's apprentice. He had some guns. He had some guns. He was a man of God. And he came in there, and he picked up the furniture, and he threw it. I'm not going to throw it, but he literally threw it across the house. And he, you, you, you don't like me yelling and screaming and shouting. Jesus yelled at the top of his voice, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you made it a den of thieves. He was angry. He was mad. And he's angry and he's mad today. They turned on him. A few days later, <laughs> they arrested him. And the authorities said, Do you want Jesus or do you want Barabbas? And they said, Give us Barabbas. And then the Roman authorities and the Jewish authorities said, Well, what shall we do with Jesus? Who's called the Christ? You know what the people said? Crucify him. Crucify. Look, that's why I don't preach according to polls. I don't preach according to popularity. I don't care what the majority says because the majority's wrong like they were on election day here in the United States last November. The people are wrong. The people are wrong. Don't follow surveys. I only survey the wondrous cross. They're waving palm branches at him. I want to preach to you today for a few moments a message that I call the Palm Beach Gospel. You heard me. The Palm Beach Gospel. Prosperity. Positive confession. Possibility thinking. Purpose-driven lives. Positive confessions. Popularity. It's not the gospel. It's either Joel Osteen or the book of Joel. It's either the Apostle Paul or Paula White. It's either the Prince of Peace or Joseph Prince. It's either the Gospel of Matthew or Matthew Crouch. It's either Joyce Meyer or the Joy of the Lord. It's either the angel Gabriel blowing the trumpet or Gabriel Swagger. He pitched a fit. He's not the meek and mild-mannered Jesus, the little lamb that you think he is. He is the Lord of glory. He's the bright and morning star, the lily of the valley, the king of kings, and the Lord of lords. And that's how he's coming again, with wrath and judgment and vengeance. And your Palm Beach gospel is the Laodicean message. We are rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing but your poor, miserable, lame, blind, and naked. Now, a few weeks ago I preached a series called The American Way and the Christian Way. And, I, you know, I never finished it. I never finished a message. But the American Way, you know, it gives no evidence at all of the existence of any so-called supposed Judeo-Christian heritage at all. Our missionary endeavors were merely the missions of men, not the way of the master. We only exported Americanism, not Christianity. 
But you know, recently God shut down our big office towers, our big high rises and skyscrapers. You think God was sending a message to corporate America in the American way? You better believe he was. What shall the end be, is what Peter asked. Well, I'm telling you, if you'll listen to me. Look, a Western and an Americanized Jesus is not the real Jesus. I live in the Washington, D.C. area. I'm a big fan of the Washington Nationals. We won the World Series in 19. But in 20, on opening day, they very nicely and graciously extended an invitation to Dr. Anthony Fauci to throw out the first pitch. Well, he missed about 30 feet wide left. It was the worst pitch I've ever seen. I fell out of my chair laughing. But as, as, as Dr. Fauci was throwing the first pitch, I thought to myself, you know, the Nationals missed a golden opportunity. Mike Rizzo and Davey Martinez and the Lerner family should have invited this evangelist to come. And as Dr. Fauci was throwing out the first pitch, I should have quacked the national anthem. Quack, 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 quack. I should have quacked it in his honor. These people are practicing medicine. They're not perfecting medicine. The Center of Disease Control has one job. This is to control disease, and they can't control disease. We don't need Dr. Fauci or Dr. Gupta or Dr. Blixt or Dr. Redfield. We need Dr. Jesus. We need Dr. Luke. We don't need Obamacare. Glory to God, we need Jesus care. You don't need Medicare. You need the master's care. You don't need social security. You need eternal security. Hallelujah. I'm so tired of these young men, these athletes that we worship, these actors, activists. They're trying to be a stud. But you need to quit trying to be a stud and start studying the Word of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Pastors today, they rest of the Scriptures and they con their congregations. Matthew Crouch of TBN is clueless about Matthew's gospel. Joseph Prince is clueless about Joseph in the Bible. Where's Paul Crouch Jr. these days? I'm just asking. Jim Baker and Pat Robertson and Jimmy Swaggart should pick up the phone and call me because they're on banana peels. If I was in my 80s and facing eternal hell, I'd pick up the phone and dial 703-405-1942 and talk to the prophet of God that might help save my soul. 703, Jimmy Swaggart. 405, Jim Baker. 1942, Pat Robertson. And anybody else who wants to call. I don't respect people. I'll take anybody's call. I'm not too big for you. I'm not too big for my britches. I answer every correspondence sent to me as long as it's clean. Right? Gabriel Swaggart knows nothing of the message of the kingdom the mighty, God, the mighty angel Gabriel delivers. Richard Roberts ought to pick up the phone and call me. James Robinson ought to call me. Ken Hagen Jr. and Craig Hagen ought to call me. 703-405-1942. The American way it seems to be is an ever-evolving or devolving, as the case may be, humanism, heresy, and apostasy. We need Jesus, not the Jesuit order. Those of you that remember being a kid or you have kids, you know there's an old game called hide-and-seek. Remember that game, hide-and-seek? You give the guy time, the kid time to go and hide. And he gets in a place where you can't see him or hear him. And then the other person says, Ready or not, here I come. And